Well, with at least 68 journalists and media workers killed since October 7th, this latest war between Israel and Hamas, and Hamas has been amongst the deadliest conflicts for the press since the Committee to Protect Journalists began gathering data over three decades ago. Palestinians account for the vast majority of those casualties. And even outside of Gaza, this conflict has led to much harsher conditions for Palestinians who are reporting in the West Bank and within Israel as well. Tim Dawson, De Deputy General Secretary at the International Federation of Journalists, joins us now on the program for more on this. Thank you very much for joining us, sir, today. Good to be with you. So why has this conflict in particular been so deadly for journalists? What has changed uh, in any case from the past wars between Israel and Hamas? Well, I, I, I think there is a history of the Israeli Defense Force uh, targeting journalists. Um, we saw that, you know, in, in isolated cases with Shireen Abu Akhla and, and over a significant period. But I think this conflict has been really without precedent, both because of its intensity in a very small geographical area and because the borders of Gaza have been sealed. So, I, so, to the, so, so far as I'm aware, there are no international journalists in the enclave at the moment. And at least according to all the Gazan journalists I speak with, uh, they believe that they are not only being targeted, but that they receive threatening phone calls from people purporting to represent the IDF uh, in, the, in the days and hours before uh, th th they are targeted and there is a deliberate attempt to kill them. Now, it's a war. Uh, it's very difficult to verify these facts, but I can tell you that is the widely held belief of journalists in Gaza that they are being deliberately targeted. Is there any international, uh, have there been any international investigations to corroborate that, to, to, to confirm or, de or deny that claim that this is a purposeful campaign by the Israeli military to silence journalists in Gaza? Well, there hasn't because nobody is able to get into Gaza. What there is, however, uh, is investigations into things that have happened before this conflict. So I mentioned a moment ago the killing of Shireen Abu Akhla in the West Bank uh, something over a year ago. The UN produced a report, a very uh, meticulous uh, and even-handed report, uh, which was published in the very early days of this conflict, in which it concluded that uh, Abu Akhla had either been deliberately or recklessly killed by the IDF. Now, what I'd like to see and what the International Federation of Journalists would like to see is for the International Criminal Court to seriously investigate that case. I mean, my feeling is we should start with that case. It's before the sort of real shock and, 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 and mess of this war because there is, there is a great deal of forensic evidence and that would be a good starting point to get to the bottom of what's been happening and would hopefully provide a template that could then be applied to these subsequent deaths. It's going to be very difficult to get full evidence for all of these deaths. But I think at least some of them, a good number of them, really should be investigated by the International Criminal Court to test these allegations in a judicial environment. But even investigating, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the lowest possible number of, of, of journalist casualties within Gaza would, of course, require Israel to give access to international investigators to the Gaza Strip. Is it realistic, then, to expect that there will be any international accountability anytime soon? Well, I think all we can do is to continue to call for it. All we can do is continue to say, firstly, that guards and journalists are doing a remarkable job. I mean, something like seven or eight percent of the entire number of guards and journalists have now lost their lives. But as your pictures that you've been showing this morning have shown, they're doing an outstanding job of collecting uh, documentary footage of what's happening in their area. And it's worth remembering they have very little food, they have very little water, they have no fuel, so that they're walking to their assignments with television cameras carried on their shoulders to obtain this footage and I think they are I think they are a, a real credit to their trade and their profession I think it's probably not possible while the conflict's going on for criminal proceedings to to start but my, my earnest hope is that pressure from the international community to say that some accountability will have to be held for these actions will will, will start to change the situation. Gaza is, of course, not the only place where it's been difficult for Palestinians to report since October the 7th. What is the situation like uh, for Palestinians both in the West Bank, the other Palestinian territory, and also in Israel? Well, the, 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 the scale of clampdown 
uh, in those areas. The, 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 the inability for people to move around, which is, is often a prerequisite for reporting, has been very significantly increased. The checkpoints, the military stopping people moving around, the, 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 the seemingly needless and random uh, investigations of people. There have been dawn raids on journalists' houses. Um, there have been almost 200 people died in the West Bank, not, 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 not journalists, but just in general. So the, the atmosphere within um, within those areas has been deeply, deeply difficult. Even, I might say, for Israeli journalists, life has been difficult. Um, Haaretz newspaper, uh, you know, a daily newspaper um, that has been published in Israel for many years, has been accused of aiding the enemy by the Israeli government, and they've pulled adverts from there. So it, it, it's hard to ignore the... Uh, conclusion that the Israeli government is trying to close down free expression and free reporting throughout the territory, um, I can only think, well, I, I, one can only speculate as to why, but I think trying to stop news getting out uh, of, of Israel and Palestine would seem to be their objective. Do you think that Israelis uh, have a complete picture then about what's happening in Gaza? We've spoken, of course, about uh, how Palestinian journalists are, are, are treated in Israel. But what about Israeli journalists, journalists in Israel in general, rather? Are they reporting uh, as, as objectively as possible, do you think, on, on the situation in Gaza? Well, uh, uh, Israeli society is, is, is enormously diverse. There are a great range of political views, and I think that's reflected in their news media. There's also obviously a very high consumption of international news media in Israel. Um, I, 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 some of their media are clearly operating as, as flag wavers for the Israeli Defense Force and are turning a blind eye to some of its worst excesses. Some, I think, are doing quite a responsible and determined job to hold their government and the defence forces to account. Um, so I, 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 I think it's a very mixed uh, situation in terms of media in Israel. Tim Dawson, Deputy General Secretary of the International Federation of Journalists, thank you very much for joining us on the programme today. 